Good afternoon, everyone, and uh, welcome to our 10th, EmployFlex's 10th virtual webinar, um, our free back to work webinars. My name is Helen Walsh. I am a flexible work specialist with EmployFlex, and I'm delighted to co-host today with our guest speaker, uh, Mindset and Confident Confidence Coach, Anna Healy, who you can see here next to me on the screen. Um, a little bit about ourselves, Employee Flex, and it's great to see so many of um, regular attendees here over the last few weeks. So um, apologies, you've heard our little intro spiel before. But um, our founder, Karen O'Reilly, founded Employee Mum in 2016 when she saw a real need for, for an agency specifically to help women, professional women, find work and find some form of flexible work. So I joined Karen soon after, thanks to an introduction from our guest speaker today, Anna Healy. And I found I joined Karen in 2017, and we've been working together for lots of three years um, on building the Employee Mum brand. In, 20, in 2019, we noticed quite a shift in our placements, both in terms of our candidates, and um, we we saw kind of a need. And while Employee Mum has served us well and still does, we saw that over 50% of our placements were a, a non non parent, and 30% of our placements were males so it did make business sense at the time to add the brand employee flex to to our under our umbrella brand of employee mum so we've been successfully um running both both of those uh, sub brands uh since 2019 um we do normally run these type of uh, back to work workshops in a face-to-face -face capacity across the counties in ireland but you know we're delighted to bring them online because um, we can allow larger attendances and you know it's we, we've it's been very interactive and the Q&A sessions have been very you know it's been been as as engaging really as they would have been um, face to face so we're delighted to see the success of this um, we are lobbyists for flexible work in Ireland uh, right now we have been so since mid-March we've been very much in interviewing in the national media talking specifically around remote work because that's the new the new, the new, um, we've all been catapulted into remote work, work in some format or another. Um, we also do a lot of remote work training programs right now, both for employees who are embracing remote work for the first time, and as well for managers who are trying and trying and educating themselves on how to manage their teams remotely when they're not, when, when they don't have that safety net of seeing them face to face, which they have been used to pre-COVID. Um, so a little bit of housekeeping there. If you hover at the bottom of your screen, you see a, a Q&A option. Now there's also a chat function, which we're not going to use during this hour, but the Q&A fu function, please go ahead. And as you hear Anna speaking, and if it triggers any questions, please slot those in. And at the end of Anna's talk, I will facilitate those questions and answer and ask um, Anna any of those questions that you may have. This session will be recorded and available on YouTube after. And um, let's see, anything else? Oh, as Anna and ourselves, I suppose, are running these for free, we'd really appreciate if you can engage somehow online, uh, whether it's a follow or a, a quick review or testimonial, um, you know, that that would be a lovely way of giving back to us and thanking us for the time. So a little bit about our speaker, Anna. Um, well, I was very lucky myself personally. I met Anna and availed of her coaching um, when I returned from living abroad for a few years and at the time was was a little bit lost myself and I was delighted to get the introduction to Karen O'Reilly and you know have been you know living living the dream and working in a role that I really enjoy thanks to the introduction from Anna. Um, Anna is a highly experienced life and business coach and she has successfully worked with hundreds of people to help them achieve their best self. She works on a strength-based approach and is known for helping people building confidence and getting clarity in their direction in life and work. Anna has her own podcast which, which promotes women in business and she has a regular show on West Cork FM. Anna is also a neuro-linguistic programming practitioner, there's a mouthful, and <laughs> uses this with her clients to enhance performance and transform <laughs> mindset. Um, and that's what Anna wrote, but I'll tell you as well that Anna is um, a very active and engaging coach um, on the Employee Flex, Flex team. And you know, we, we often get uh, candidates who've taken a career break for whatever reason coming to us and they've clearly lost their mojo and you know, they've really lost, they really need that bit of a reminder that they still have that skill set that they had 
pre taking a career break or what whatever reason was that they bowed out of work for a while. And we've seen such a, an amazing transformation before and after after them investing in some time with uh, a coach like Anna. So, you know, I can't stress enough, you know, you, I suppose we invest, if we have kids, we invest in, you know, sending them swimming lessons or what have you, or investing in a car for ourselves. But it's rare enough that we invest if you lost and needing a bit of clarity or focus, you know, it's very much, it's a great gift to yourself to invest in a few, a few sessions with a coach like Anna. So I'll hand you over to Anna now. And um, Anna, you can go ahead there and uh, uh, share your screen and okay. um, try and turn, turn my own face off. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, wow, what a lovely introduction there from Helen. Thank you so much. I'm very chuffed. Um, just give me one second now while I do my screen share. It works. Let me see now. Here we go. Can I'm sure everybody can see that. Now, my Wi-Fi is a little bit funny, so I'm actually going to turn off my video so that um, it doesn't impact um, where we're going. OK, so thank you so much um, for having me on today. I'm really flattered, honoured, uh, excited uh, to be doing this. So. What we're talking about today is going to be cultivating a confidence in three easy steps. So maybe just a little summary about who I am. So I'm a life, business and career coach with a particular focus on mindset and confidence. I've been a coach for almost 15 years now, and I've worked with people in a supportive capacity for over 20 years. Um, I am the founder of a woman's group called Lighthearted Women. What initially started as one coffee morning at the beginning of COVID has developed into a movement of its own. Um, the purpose of the group is to support women to build their confidence and help them develop skills and connections to help them get to the next stage of their life, their career and business. The group is national now, thanks to Zoom. Uh, we meet every Tuesday morning at 11. Uh, we set goals, we support each other, we encourage each other learn something new and be the best version of themselves. There's been amazing progress in the group since it started in March. I'm part of the Powerhouse Collective, which is a group of industry experts across photography, skincare and beauty, hair and makeup, digital marketing and online personal branding through LinkedIn and executive coaching. And we all have one thing in common, which is we want you to strive and thrive in your personal and professional life. So Powerhouse is for people who are in need of a reboot inside and out to create a more powerful you. I'm a career coach with Employee FX, as Helen said, for almost four years now. I'm a committee member with Network Ireland West Cork as well. Podcast producer. Um, I am a guide with Forest Bathing West Cork and Cork. Forest Bathing is new to Ireland and it's all about immersing your senses in nature and reconnecting with yourself. I use this myself to help me build my confidence, supporting other people to learn about themselves and become more at peace and confident with themselves. I'm also a designated trainer on wellness and resilience with the Irish Farmers Association. Now, this sounds all very glam, doesn't it? Maybe it doesn't, but maybe it does to me. So let's go to the next slide. And everything I've said is true and accurate. However, Life hasn't always been completely plain sailing. And I want to share a few of those life-changing moments uh, with you. So the same Anna, the same picture, the same person. What I did, I failed out of college at 21. Um, spectacularly, um, I was studying business in UL. Um, and I had to make a decision around where I was going to go again. So I did a community employment scheme in the CIT uh, in 1994, which helped me get some perspective and helped me decide what I wanted to take. So back to college into the CIT for three years and started my career then um, in 1998 in, I suppose, social care. Um, I did a night class in UCC in 2003 on personal management. So I've a higher diploma in that. And that was a, a massive learning for me. Um, and it gave me a real hunger as well to, to work with adults, to work with people and businesses. 
Um, so then, yeah, burned out, um, took a career break in 2006. Um, I moved down to West Cork because I suppose I was exhausted from the career that I was in. It was high pressure, uh, high stress, um, high risk. And um, so I took six months out and I was a diving instructor for six months, which was wonderful. Um, and then found a new career in 2006 as a job coach. Back to college again between 2009 and 2012, part-time college, full-time work. Um, and then career change again in 2019. Um, and why am I telling you all of this? Well, I suppose everybody has a story. Everybody has a background um, which will have its ups and downs. And for me, when I reflect back, what is important is not what happened, but how I responded to it and gained my confidence each time. So let's get on to the meaty bit. It all begins and ends in your mind. What do you give power to has power over you, if you allow it. So let's talk about confidence. Who comes to mind when you think of someone who is confident? What characteristics do they exhibit? What do they look like? Everybody has their own definition of what a confident person looks like and what it should feel to them. Um, from speaking to people, I one woman said, oh, somebody who's confident is someone who's able to talk to anybody. Somebody else said, oh, you know, they're able to stand up in front of people and give a presentation. Somebody else said confident in an interview. So everybody has their own interpretation of it. But I suppose it's a feeling or a belief that you can do something well or that you can succeed at something. That you have that certainty that you can succeed, that you know something for sure, that you trust yourself to be able to do something. Confidence is not something that the elite few have and that everybody else doesn't. If you think about it, if I asked you to make me a cup of tea and a ham sandwich right now, I would be fairly confident that you could do it in the comfort of your own home, as you have been doing this for so long now, and you're fairly sure of the results of your effort. So we all have confidence in certain areas of our lives. Most people here today could list quite a few tasks that they would feel confident in. But if I put you into the kitchen of a five star hotel, and asked you to create an afternoon tea for two people in a restaurant that looked like this, then most of us would probably quake at the idea. Our confidence goes out the window. And if you think about it, we all have the necessary skills. So what happened there? And how can we get it back? So what stopped us from taking that opportunity to set up an afternoon tea in a five-star hotel? 60,000 thoughts stopped us. There are approximately 60,000 thoughts running through your head every day. Now, you can work out the maths on how many a week, how many a month, how many a year. Now, let's break it down. 60% of these are repetitive and mostly unconscious. So, of those unconscious thoughts, how many of those are negative, restrictive? protective and keeping you in your bubble, in your comfort zone. And I remind you here now, a lot of these are unconscious, so not that obvious to you. They are automatic thoughts that veer you away maybe from danger, from fear, but from challenge and from opportunity too, without you even knowing it. So did you ever notice when you're an autopilot, you don't even realize where you are or what you're doing. You could be brushing your teeth. Every day we brush our teeth, morning and night. And we're dreaming away, thinking about all sorts of things. We don't even think about what we're actually doing in that moment. We're on autopilot. You're just doing it. I don't know the amount of times I have driven the road from Ben. I don't even know if I passed a certain town or a village because I've done it so many times, it's automatic. So your brain works like that regarding thoughts and regarding opportunities. It goes on autopilot. So your brain, 
works on experiences you have had in the past, good or bad, and categorizes them automatically according to certain filters and continues this process until you consciously decide to change it. In the past, these conscious thoughts were there to protect you. Think of when maybe the cavemen existed and they needed to remember what was friend or foe, what was nutritious, what was toxic, what was safe or dangerous. These days, I suppose these days, things are slightly different and our needs are different, but our unconscious brain works in the same way in that it stores up all the information and lets you know what is and what is a threat based on your experience at the time. So for example, simple example, if you got a fright at a swimming pool when you were six years old, then this experience and this memory will be stowed away into your unconscious mind for many years and could inadvertently, inadvertently impact on your self during your life. So say, for example, another example could be, you know, if you were small and you made a mistake in front of your class and you have held on to this, maybe somebody laughed at you, maybe the teacher corrected you, you could hold on to this in your mind for all your days and you might never consciously be aware of it, but it can hold you back from stepping out there and from performing. So how does this relate to us? Do you ever stop to listen to your thoughts when you're in the moment? For example, when I was invited to come to this webinar, my conscious logical mind said, oh, wow, yes, thank you so much. I am just really flattered. What a lovely opportunity for me to share what I know about how to build your confidence. And then when I was left pondering, my unconscious mind would throw a few little uncertain thoughts into my awareness. Really? You? Sure, what do you know? Sure, you don't. You won't be good enough. Or what if the technology doesn't work? What if the kids interrupt? You know, all those kind of questions that would normally rattle me if I let them. So what can I do about this? Because if I listened to these thoughts, I wouldn't be here today. So the first thing is to notice your language. Notice the thoughts as they rise. When you're on your own, when things are nice and quiet, just listen to the thoughts that are going through your head. There's a couple of ways to do this. Journaling is, an, is a great way to do this. It's basically keeping a notebook of the thoughts that are going through your mind. Notice if there is a pattern, is there a regular language that you use? And I promise you, Helen and Karen have said this time and time again, I just, or I only, or I mightn't be able to, or I wouldn't, or, you know, I'm always useless at computers, or oh, I could never stand in front of a group, or I could never do a webinar, where you play things down, you know, play yourself down, where you play small, where you create doubt in your mind. These are called self-limiting thoughts, which are coming from and feeding into your self-limiting beliefs. So you need to challenge these thoughts. You need to investigate. You need to be ruthless. Check the truth in these thoughts. Do a complete fact check around them, a bit like an investigator. Be your own advocate. So for example, I have worked with a client who wanted to expand her career, but she was afraid of doing interviews. So she avoided it. So, but when we did a bit of fact checking, she remembered that she had been the captain of a debate team in her local club. She could sing in public as part of a show. So she had amazing skills to be able to stand in front of an interview panel. So what we did there was break it all down into bite-sized little pieces for her so that her mind was able to process those fears and help her build her confidence when she did go for interview. I worked with a woman who was in a senior position in financial services for 15 years. And after a career break, she decided to go back to work. However, she decided that she was out of the loop too long and was thinking of going to the local supermarket to ask if she could get a job. 
pretty much stacking shelves or working at the counter, which is perfectly fine. But after that amount of experience, you need to look at it. So after working through her CV and identifying her passion, which wasn't stacking shelves, she, we, just, we started to fact check the thoughts that she had related to her career. And she made the revelation that all the skills and all the experience and the knowledge that she had gained throughout her career was not lost in the void. She was still the same person that she was in her previous career. And it was more of a case of dusting off the bike rather than throwing it into the rubbish tip. So your unconscious mind can be wrong at times. Your unconscious thoughts that served you yesterday may not serve you today. Now, those unconscious thoughts are always trying to mind you and protect you. They're always trying to do it in your best interest, but sometimes they kind of get it wrong or they just don't serve you anymore. So be prepared to challenge them and change them according to the direction of your future. Now, what also helps is to reframe what you're going to say. So for example, if an opportunity is offered to you and it can be a bit daunting, instead of saying, a flat no, such as, would you like to do a webinar for Employee Flex? Um, how about saying something like, um, I haven't tried it before, but I'm curious how it works. Um, can I think about it? And I will come back to you. Just give yourself that time without actually saying the no word. So, for example, when I was doing, when, I, when the opportunity of a podcast uh, came my way, I would run a mile and hide, to be honest. The idea of um, hearing my voice on radio, the idea of having to use a lot of technology, it all was quite scary. And I, I, I would have said no, but I knew that it would be an amazing opportunity. So I reframed and I agreed to try one first. Plus, I had taught myself last year, 2019, I wasn't allowed to say no. Um, and it was a fabulous experience because it, it really made me think about what I was capable of, um, which was a lot more than what I thought. So remind yourself of the other things that you've learned throughout your life and career that would be just completely alien to some, you know. So um, Henry Ford, he once said, whether you think you can or you can't, you're right. And it's so true. Um, if you five years ago that I would be a businesswoman, that I would be collaborating with amazing people, doing webinars and podcasts, I would have laughed at you, to be honest. Um, but by keeping an open mind, looking for the opportunities that support my values and challenging that negative self-talk, the world is my oyster. I can choose where I want to go with it. And it can be yours too. Now, affirmations. Affirmations can be a great way to inject some positivity into your thinking. Now that we've challenged, now that we've noticed our language, we're challenging our negative self-talk, we're now going to inject some positive talk some positive language in. Affirmations are statements that we say to ourselves to remind us who we truly are or who we choose to be. I find that affirmations can create so much space in my life and it creates so many opportunities. So for an affirmation to be effective, it needs to start with the words, I am. To use the present tense, State it in the positive, keep it brief, make it specific, and use a feeling word or include an action word. So I know that sounds very complicated, but when you start this, when you get the hang of it, you'll be able to create your own to suit your own situation. So one that I used last year um, when I started out in business uh, was that I am open to all opportunities. And I say this all the time to remind myself not to close my mind, not to close my heart, not to feel that fear, feel the fear, but just be open to the opportunities. 
what I have on my business card and what I really feel strongly about is that I create my own possibilities. So I use my creativity to create my own future. So an affirmation will help you focus your thoughts and language and create a channel on which you wish to operate. Affirmations are usually spoken first thing in the morning and last thing at night. But to be honest, you can do repeat affirmations anytime during the day if it helps boost your confidence and boost your outlook. So in terms of preparing for an interview, an affirmation is amazing um, because it can help you remind you that you are a competent, qualified, capable, experienced person and you want to share your knowledge and experience with the panel. It really works. I worked with a client who was very nervous going into interview and we explored all the challenges and discussed how she would like to present an interview. So by focusing on certain words, she was able to keep her cool in the interview and present the best way possible. So her words were that she wanted to feel calm. She wanted to present her message clearly and she wanted to feel grounded. And it worked, it really worked. So today, for example, um, what I want is I want to feel calm. I want to feel, be clear in my message and I want to feel warm coming through as well. So like, it's so important. Another one, you have everything that you need, everything that you need in, in your life right now. So confidence is connected to our self-esteem and it is connected to the willingness to stand up for ourselves, to feel proud of ourselves and stand up for our beliefs. It is about believing in yourself and feeling comfortable in your true knowledge, you know, in, in, in your, and knowing that you have worth. Um, these tips, I suppose, will help you change the language you use about yourself and it'll also help you see the world in a completely different way. They say that confidence is attractive and brings success, brings success and you generally feel happier about yourself. Confidence is seen as a soft skill, so that means it can be learnt. And also, with any confidence, it's a skill you need to practice. So Mahatma Gandhi, I think he summed it up very well there. Your beliefs become your thoughts. Your thoughts become your words. Your words become your actions. Your actions become your habits. Your habits become your values. And your values become your destiny. But you can change. That's the thing. Go back and be the ruthless detective. Change them for where you want to go. So step two know thyself this is my second tip for cultivating confidence and i suppose this is very much focused towards cv and interviews um and and i suppose your direction in terms of career so most people think that preparation is in the cv when the job is advertised and yes that does take significant work but as a career coach for the last Oh, almost 15 years, I would argue that there's more work that needs to be completed before this. In order to present yourself as a confident and capable applicant, it would be wise to understand what you really want yourself, what you stand for, your values, and how is your life in alignment with these values. This to me is really important. As once you are clear on this, then you know the direction you wish to take in your career and you're not just running to just any company that will take you. This is really important for your mental well-being also. If you choose a job where your company values do not align to yours, you will become unhappy in your role, which will impact on your personal life also. And our needs change during our lives. What was important when we were 20 may not be important at all when we are 30, when we are 40, when we are 50 years old. I've worked with many clients who are happy to work in 
you know, the corporate world in their 20s, moving up in responsibility in their 30s, and then realizing that their values and priorities had changed and they wanted a different type of work, a different focus, a different company. And that's perfectly fine. There's no judgment in this at all. My invitation to you today is to look at what is important to you and your current lifestyle and maybe be open to a more creative opportunities that might suit what you need right now. I had a client who wished to move from her full-time role to a role that would give her more job satisfaction. She'd been with the company, gosh, 10 years and wasn't feeling stimulated enough in her role. Through working with her, she outlined her values, her passions, her needs, and then set about finding a way to achieve her next goal. Now, she's, she's actually halfway through a really cool course that will take her to her next dream job. But what was interesting to me was that once she became clear about what she wanted, her confidence and she was focused and ready to take the next steps. So step two in knowing thyself is to know and believe in what you can do. So when you're preparing your CV and preparing for interview, you need to understand what the company needs in the first place. So it is so important to get a job description and a person spec for each role that you apply for. And what would be very helpful is that you can take a copy of your own job description as well for your own reference and keep adding to it regularly. What I also recommend is that if you don't have a job description or if there is more work outside of the job description um, that you do, such as maybe different kind of projects outside of your general job description, um, write up everything that you do on a on a weekly basis, on a monthly basis, all the different roles and responsibilities that you have in your current job. Write them all up. Write up your voluntary and community involvement as well. Um, write it up and keep a record of when you, for when you need it. Um, it's so important because I think what a lot of people, they forget because they do things so often, it is literally in your unconscious mind. You don't even think of it as being important anymore. So there's a lot of people out there who could be on committees. Um, they could be on tidy towns. They could be on the parents association. There's so many different things, so many aspects that have different responsibilities. You could be a coach with the, the local GAA or soccer club or rugby club so important to record all of those things because they are a massive reflection on who you are and what your values are um, and they would be fabulous for giving examples the questions in an interview um, so from my experience most people they do omit something that they automatically do on a regular basis and it could be really interesting in an interview um, this is where the job spec comes in very handy. If you can provide examples of the work that you do and that it re relates directly to this job spec, then you have evidence that you have all the required competencies for the role being advertised. The amount of clients that I work with who mm, would like to apply for a job or is trying for something different and they, they play themselves down, they play small, and, and they don't uh, consider certain aspects of their role being important. Sure, I'm only administration. Sure, I only do, you know, software technology. I do. And they don't realize how, imp how important it is to share that information in, in, in the interview, you know. Community and voluntary work, it does count in your CV. So be specific what your role is and how active you are. And don't be afraid to big yourself up um, because you've probably made yourself small in the first place. So if you struggle with this, try and write it in the third person first. It sometimes helps to separate you from your ego, you know? So Anna does this and Anna does that as opposed to I do this and I do that. Um, because we can kind of feel a little bit self-conscious when we talk about the I. 
So finally, this is my third tip in terms of cultivating confidence. Practice, practice, practice. Um, competence breeds. So for me, the key thing to succeed in any skill is to practice. Um, so in order to feel confident in something, you have to practice it. You have to build your competence in it. Personally, I hate the word practice um, at the moment because I've had to use that word so many times during my homeschooling days with my nine year old practice, practice, practice the piano. Um, yeah, could be thrown out the window at this stage, but it is impossible to be an expert at anything after one go. Um, so, and that also includes building your CV and performing in interviews. God, in my younger days, I aced, I did, I was brilliant at interviews at the beginning without any preparation, um, obviously my term. But I suppose as the levels kind of went up and the responsibilities increased and the demand, you know, there's competition out there. It became more challenging, definitely, for sure, to succeed. And I remember my first interview where I didn't get the job. I was gutted, but I knew damn well. I hadn't prepared well enough for the interview at all. I wasn't ready for the questions, and I didn't feel grounded enough when the questions were being asked because I wasn't prepared. So the trick is to keep practicing. Understand your answers inside out so that you're relaxed with your knowledge. And then if you're thrown a curveball or a question you hadn't prepared for, then you'll have time to process it because you won't have to try and remember all the other questions, you know. Now, one key point to remember about confidence is that perfectionism is a real confidence killer. The perfectionist mindset is very critical of you and will be disappointed with everything unless the outcome is exceptional. So perfection is all or nothing. Um, so I prefer to focus on progress. Um, progress rather than perfection, it allows for learning. It forgives mistakes. Progress allows you to experiment and try something different. So the next time you go for an interview, Go for progress rather than perfection. We're continually evolving. We're continually learning. Progress allows us to evolve. Progress allows us to learn. And, you know, if you go in with the progress mindset rather than perfection, teens love progress. Te managers love to hear that you're open to progress and that you're open to learning. So progress rather than perfection. OK, so. So let's go back to the beginning. I first asked you to go into a commercial kitchen of a five star hotel. To make an afternoon tea for two customers. After what I've shared with you just this past while. Do you think you would look at it in a different way now? You would probably be more curious. You would probably maybe be excited about the prospect. You would ask questions. You would have maybe a little bit more self-belief that you can do most, if not all aspects of the job. You would remind yourself how amazing you are already at making tea and ham sandwiches. So they all transfer over, can't be that complicated. You would encourage progress and maybe not the perfection approach. And you would embrace the experience and have some fun with it. And if you feel like this while making tea and sandwiches, um, imaginary tea and sandwiches, imagine how you could feel when you apply all of this into your life and career. Our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It is our light, not our darkness, that most frightens us. 
Nelson Mandela. So thank you very much for listening to me. Um, I hope you got something from this. Um, so I'm open to questions. Great. Thanks a million, Anna. Anna, if you can um, stop sharing there. your screen there. Yeah, if you can yeah. stop sharing your screen. Yeah. Perfect. Perfect. Thanks a million, Anna. I've been, I've been writing frantically. I'm glad this has been recorded. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> And um, listen, firstly, yeah, firstly, thanks a million. I, I love that you, you know, you shared your, you have a very varied CV there. And, you know, you know, you're very humble and modest and, you know, you're always, I think that's what we love about you. You're so refreshingly relatable um, to us and to our candidates, especially those that need that. Thank you for, you know, for being kind of so vulnerable and saying, you know, I failed an exam or what, what have you. Um, you know, that's, I think that's really refreshing. Um, the 60,000 thoughts, even though I've heard it before, it's, it's crazy, but understandable. And you, as you say yourself, when you're driving and you actually have no recollection if you've driven past a town, it's kind of crazy, the amount of things, and we're always jumping ahead. And I think if anything, maybe COVID has given us a, a bit of a cool down. You know, we don't need to be chasing our tails all of the time. Um, self-limiting beliefs and self-limiting words. You know, that's one, even I myself, right above here on my laptop now, I have the word stop saying just I'll probably struggle to get through to the end of this <laughs> webinar without using a self-limiting word. It's, yeah. it's, it's a problem worldwide, I think, and it's definitely more of a problem in, in our own gender, in the females, but I think even more so, and I've said this loads to, fem to Irish girls, you know, we're, yeah. we're not great at taking compliments, and I have to remind loads of my candidates that the two-page CV, now more than ever, is so important because competition is very high. Unfortunately, many people have been laid off and don't assume that they know any more than you than these two pages that they're looking at if you are a job so you need you need to write a cv where you're absolutely cringing that you're nearly boasting so much you're actually mortified with the cv that you've submitted because you have to you have to boast that cv or you won't even get a look in and get that next step um you mentioned um your second step know thyself and around your needs changing throughout your life and it's funny the amount of how we've noticed a shift in some people just since COVID, you know, priorities mm -hmm. have changed. They've realized now that, you know, they're asking a lot more questions about the culture and about companies and, and, you know, gone are the days when certain jobs we, we thought were safe have, you know, things have changed just this year. 2020 has definitely been a, there's been a big shift there. And, um, perfectionism is a mindset killer. I love that. You know, mm. before people used to use, you know, the strengths and weaknesses question, you know, I'm a perfectionist. Yeah, that's gone with those days. And I love that focusing on progress rather than perfection. And um, Anna, you've used yourself before in some other talks I've heard you speaking at around being enough, enough, you know, accepting that this is, you know, I've learned from it. And, you know, a lot of people, people ask me, you know, how, you know, if, if a company is asking me, why do you want to join our company? I always mm -hmm. suggest something around the lines of, I want a company that I can grow with, a company that I can progress with. As long as I'm learning every day and being challenged, you know, that's the type of company I want to get, get in the door at. So, mm. listen, thanks a million. That was fantastic. And loads more, loads more there. <laughs> and like confidence is a skill. I mean, that's the great news about confidence, that it's a skill, yeah. you know, that you can keep practicing. And, you know, you're similarly like, two months ago, Karen asked me to run one of these webinars. I said, no, thank you. I'll hide in the back managing Q&A. But, you know, here we are now and, you know, that's all about eat, eating the frog and all of that. And yeah. I, if But it is progress. Mind, it is it all is. about progress, you know. Oh, um, I love that. I yeah. love that. I mean, perfectionism or progress over perfection. I love that. I have quite a few questions here, Anna. So if you're OK to um, me to go through them, a, lot of, <laughs> a lot of um, thumbs up as well. Um, one of your powerhouse collective uh, <laughs> here has given you a big uh, thumbs up. And um, let's see, oh yeah, Maura Mackie as well said, she loves the dusting off the bike saying, we all do think like this when we're going back into the workplace. It is such a daunting time for us, but with people like you, Anna, and other women's groups, we build each other up. So thanks, Maura, for that. Oh, thanks, Maura. Um, and let's see what else. Okay, I have a question here now, anonymously. What advice would you give someone who has been out of the workforce for over five years and has really lost their mojo? Do you want to, do you want to yeah, no, um, let me think about this one now. I mean, it's, it's exactly as I said, go back 
Um, I suppose normally what I, when I work with somebody, um, I listen to their story first. I always listen to their story and, and the reason why they want to go back into the workplace. I listen back to even just listening to their skills as well, to go back and look at your skills, identify the skills that you have um, and just really understand what, I suppose, understand why you want to go back to the workplace, understand um, the CV is really just to look at the skills and realize how much experience you have. And, and five years isn't really a long time. Like I said, it, it really is a case of just dust, dusting off that bicycle. Um, five years isn't a very long time. And I promise you, you've done loads in the last five years um, to keep yourself um, busy. Um, it's not like you just literally sit up on the shelf for five years. You've obviously done other things. You've either, you know, helped out in the community. You've, um, you may have helped out in the school. You may have kids. You may have done um, online courses. There's lots of things. You didn't just sit on a shelf for five years. Um, not that many people do that. So I would just say, remind yourself why you want to go back into the workplace. Um, you know, where is the hunger there? You know, and, and maybe after five years, you don't have to go back to exactly what you did before. You can completely reinvent yourself and you have all those skills that you used in the past. Be it whatever education, whatever training you've done, whatever work you've done, you have all those skills and you have more wisdom than you ever had before. So you haven't lost anything. Um, and I know Mojo, like it is challenging to find that mojo every so often. We all lose it. Um, but it really, it is about settling back into yourself, back into your body. What is important to you right now? You know, uh, don't just jump into any job. Um, find the right one that actually suits you. So take that time to get to know yourself. And as you said, Helen, before, if you can, um, and I'm, I'm not selling myself, and Helen knows I am absolutely no. woeful at selling myself. And no, everybody no. who's probably listening that knows me knows I'm woeful at selling myself. Get yourself a coach. Yeah. Give yourself that time so that you have a focus when you're actually working on where you're going to go next. Because you know what? Um, you have so much already. You know, you have so many skills. You have so much experience, whatever it is. Even if you were at home, it's called house management. God almighty, it's a nightmare. It's six months yeah. during COVID. Yeah. So give yourself that time to honor yourself and to work out where you really want to go. Does that answer that? That's absolutely, Annie. Yeah, thanks a million. And uh, can I add to that, just from, I suppose, putting on my recruitment hat, um, just whatever you do, never apologize for taking those five years, whatever you did. You know, there was a reason for it, a valid yeah. reason. Mm -hmm. Name it, own it. For sure, um, list it um, in whatever capacity you want on your CV, because as soon as there's a little um, year or two, a few years gap on a CV, people may assume the worst. So just put it in, you know, uh, took some time out to take care of a sick relative, raise young kids, do boom, boom, boom. And then now I'm very keen to get back and, you know, just flip it that I'm ready to go now. And, you know, um, yeah. but exactly as you said, there's bound to be something, whether they were coaching a J team or whatever it was. And I'll always maybe bring those to the fore just to show that you have, you know, upskilled in some other way. And they're all very transferable skills, whatever you do. Unless you were sitting yeah. watching Netflix for five years, there is something new there and you, you yeah. probably need to be reminded of that. So um, thank you, Claire, for that question. Um, I have another question here. Um, any advice for people pre-interview or pre an important meeting when the nerves just completely take over? Do you know what I... <laughs> okay, so about 20 minutes before this webinar how about that one um i actually went outside right um and what i for me what i do is i get i try and get back into my body again okay because what happens is the nerves are going to hit you you go straight up to your head and all all the energy is just shooting out up here for me that's a that's a visual thing for me so what i need to do is get my energy back into my body and that i do that through breathing uh breathing is so important do your mindfulness. I actually went for a little walk down my local road um, and I just listened to the leaves, you know, in the wind. I looked at all the different colors. I got myself grounded and, and, and centered. The affirmations are so important as well. Okay. Remind yourself, okay, that when you're going into that interview, you have everything you need that, to, to tell them that you, that you know what you need to tell them. Um, give yourself a certain I suppose like that, you know, I want to present calm. I'm going to be calm. 
um, I am going to be able to relate to these people. These are normal people who are just looking for um, a particular role or a particular aspect. So just ground yourself, get your affirmations going, you know, and just keep the breathing going. OK, just keep the breathing focus back into your body, because once you do that, then your answers will become a lot clearer. You, you'll be just more centered and more relaxed in that. Yeah, that's great. Anything else, no, like, you, yeah, you've said it all. Yeah, it's kind of I'm like your third tip there around practice as well. Whatever it is, the more you're confident in your head, you know, yeah. that, you know, what did you say? Competent, what did you wrote down? Competence, competence. Breeds confidence. Yeah. Um, no, but, you know, nerves are good. Um, you know, even I was going to you, you know, we, um, nerves, nerves are good. Nerves mean you care. You know, if you didn't feel any nerves, that would be another issue altogether. Mm. So uh, nerves mean, you know, that you want, whether it's the job interview or meeting, whatever you want to do well, you want to succeed. So nerves are good. Yeah. So don't, what I would don't. say also though, is that yeah. if it is, if it is holding you back, you know, and if it is something that is impacting you on a regular basis, then stop and explore that and get it sorted so that it doesn't hold you back in the future. future. So it could be just some belief that you have in your mind that it could be a simple thing. I'm not good at this. You know, yeah. I'm not good at talking in, to big groups. I'm not good at standing in front of whatever. Um, so just, you know, stop and think and look back um, and, and just explore that as well, you know? Okay. okay. Well, that's great tips. That's great. Um, I have another one here. Um, I'm 46 and um, I'm really passionate about going for a career change, but my friends and family are not actually very supportive. They just Aww. think they just think that I'm I'm probably beyond it in terms of age. Um, <gasps> have you any tips? Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> Don't tell them. Don't yeah. tell them. Don't yeah. ask them. If you know you're going to get a response like that, don't tell them. Don't ask them. Right. Yeah. Um, that's not saying that you go jumping, you know, out into the, the deep blue sea uh, before you're ready. But don't. Uh, but, you know, I suppose I think they're not. I suppose your friends and your family are not doing it to hold you back. They're doing it to protect you. So it's a bit like your unconscious mind. They're they're trying to protect you and make sure that you're not going to make a mistake. But uh, th so my advice is don't tell them, but really take your time to work out where you want to go, what you want to do um, and, 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 and make, I suppose, logical steps, logical steps to get you to the next stage. You can tell them afterwards. It's, you know, because you always have the naysayers, you know, you'll yeah. always have those people who will always say, what are you thinking? You know, don't be ridiculous, you know, um, and, and, and that's OK. They're only doing it in they're doing it from their own fears. They're not doing mm -hmm. it from yours. They're not actually listening to you. They're listening to themselves. Yeah. So I, like, I, you know, when I started the podcasting, I remember somebody, oh God, I could never do anything like that. So that's crazy. Why would you do that? Don't be ridiculous. But if I listened to that, I wouldn't have done that. Yeah. If I listened to that, I wouldn't be here talking, you know, right now. So when I say don't talk to your friends, I don't mean don't talk to your friends ever again. What I'm saying is, get your own head sorted, make your yeah. own plans, find the right people to ask those questions and to get you to the next stage. Your you know, the people that are saying this, they're doing it to protect you, but they're not doing that. That kind of protection may not be serving you well right now. Yeah. Yeah. Sense? No, it does. And you can tell from him or her, it's an anonymous yeah. that like, uh, like obviously they yeah. respect their friends. Of yeah. course you want, you want that oomph from your tribe, your, your, those close to you. um what I would add to you is and like the fact that he or she said they're 46 I feel like maybe the ageism probably was thrown in there by some family okay. friends too late for you so um you know we've helped many people um mm. who've maybe taken a career break you know get back into work or take that career and like a load of it is around what's really important you know well firstly it's clear that you have a passion there and follow your gut and you know give it a shot um and, you know, it would be so lovely that in a year's time, if you were able to go back and say, proved you wrong. But I think as well, um, I suppose besides, it, as Anna was saying, on ignoring that inner critic and everything, um, using your network, you have a massive network there, you know, use that network as well. And, you know, if it's, it's harder to apply for jobs just online and you don't really know where your CV is going, but maybe it's, you know, and you can start small, you know, you can do little courses and these days there's loads of little courses if it's a complete different tact for you. So, you know, you can start small without any big investment to make sure it's the right route. 
Um, and I'll say one thing from my client's point of view, when you know when they see a CV, they can quickly look back and say, okay, they did their leaving cert at this time, so they're probably around this age. You know, they can make an assumption very quickly on that. And one of their big questions is around technology. Are they tech savvy? So demonstrating that you your fluency in your fluency in technology is still there as well is an important one. Um, but yeah, Anna's tips around, you know, going for it and yeah, exactly, maybe, you know, the likes of the networks, um, Maura more Mackie there mentioned earlier, like a network, like the likes of Network Cork and or Anna's, I'm sure Anna has come together, her powerhouse collective that she alluded to earlier. That's a bunch of business women that got together to kind of, you know, help each other and their businesses grow. So yeah, if you want to get in touch actually yeah. after the fact, um, whoever yeah. wrote that question, um, the other thing though as well to remember is that like 46 is it you yeah. have another technically you have another 20 years um in your career so yeah. far unless they push the pension age out further so you need to decide for yourself what do you want to do over yeah. the next 20 years you know um and like i said don't go jumping into the deep blue sea you know when you're only learning how to swim but as as helen said take your time do the right steps um, and, and, and yes, you can move to different careers. You know, Helen has seen it. I've seen it. So many people changing careers and it mightn't be just, you know, it mightn't be a massive change. It could be just a slight shift in, in a direction that would actually suit you better, you know? So yeah, absolutely. Don't, don't give up. Um, yeah. yet. start yeah. keep listening, keep learning. Um, and, and just keep your eyes open to see what are the opportunities out there. That's it as well. Like I think just to be, be be very open to what's out there and start exploring companies that you I don't I don't you haven't you haven't gone into detail. Um, the girl who asked girl or guy who asked the question around the career, but you know, be, exactly see what companies are out there and even have a look and have a Google at the type of industry you want to go into and start following those people or those companies on LinkedIn and have, what have you and you can really start learning indirectly as well more um just to make sure but exactly you'll be working long enough and if you're not happy where you are now do yeah. take listen to your gut and follow that passion and you know if you can suck it up and if money isn't the big motivator at the start and you might have to start you know maybe mm. start at the basic level it'll be so worth it you know hopefully you'll be back um speaking at our webinars in a few years telling us about career <laughs> changes at 50. um i have another question here adam um just recently i saw a really nice job on LinkedIn advertised. So I, I, I took the evening to rewrite a cover letter and tailor my CV to the job spec to go back and apply for it. And in the space of 24 hours, I saw that it went from four applicants to 44 applicants. And now I still haven't applied it's five days later. And my mojo is, or my confidence in mo is certainly shot. Um, have you any tips? Oh. <laughs> um, um. Do it. I mean, the thing is, you, you won't know unless you actually try. Yeah, the um, work is done. The the work, is yeah, done. you have all the work done. Um, like, if you can meet the job spec there, um, they might see something in you that, that could be complete. You've no idea who else has applied, you see. This is the question, you know, the, the, the thing. If you're not in, you can't win. Um, yeah, and I suppose what we've, well, I know in the past, what I found is, uh, you know, try and do a bit of research beforehand. If you are thinking of looking for another job, try and do a bit of research, do your networking in advance, you know, almost like find out about it even before it gets on LinkedIn. But I would definitely go for it. I'd go for it. Um, and I would just maybe have a look again uh, at your job spec and I would probably uh, big it up a little bit more because you're probably playing yourself down anyway. So yeah. have a look at your job spec, at the job spec, have a look at your CV again. Um, and just be a little bit more ruthless when you're sending in that CV. Um, and, and yeah. Sorry, Anna, go ahead. No, 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 that's it. Just go for it. Why not? It's good experience. It's good practice. And, and can I add something kind of practical on that? I had a client recently, um, you know, often we love clients who work with us, but they also throw, throw their job up on LinkedIn or what have you. And I mentioned to one of my clients, oh, I see that you have 41 applicants or whatever for that specific role. And she says, no, I've only had three CVs in. And it was very interesting. So LinkedIn wow. showed me as a job seeker, as a randomer coming in from that she had 40 plus and she said, no, I've only three. And she went in to check and she asked me to take a photo and everything. So wow. um, whoever asked that question, yeah. get that CV in because there was something going on in the background of LinkedIn. If, if it was showing me that there was 40 plus and actually our LinkedIn expert, Louise, <laughs> could, could possibly add to that actually. But that was a really interesting learning for me as well. Um, 
because one of my clients, she's a regular client of mine, and she said, no, I'm, I'm having nobody applying for this. I've only had three, and um, they were overseas, and she said, I need somebody in Ireland for this specific role. So um, so definitely do give it a shot. And, you know, you might think that you're late to the table, but often those companies don't actually download all of those CVs together until the deadline. So it doesn't really, it's not like, you're not going to be given an advantage of some sort by applying within 24 hours versus, you know, as long as you're within the seven days or whatever they give you. So definitely. You, yeah, you've no idea who has applied. You have no idea Haven't. who has applied. And Half you know, probably don't have that. the experience. Like, Absolutely. Yeah. It's, so much of it is around fit. So much of it is around, and it could be like, oh, they worked at that company. And it could be like, that could be very transferable, even though in your head at the time, you don't think so. So listen, yeah. you have no idea who's reading your CV. So Def, you know, I say you have nothing to lose, but you've already yeah. done the work of tailoring your CV, so give it a shot. And yeah. um, we've hit four o'clock there, Anna. So, and actually, we've answered all the questions. All the other comments Bye. really are thank yous to you, Anna. Um, great advice as always, Anna. Thank you. Um, one my one takeaway is never say no when you're asked to do something new. So that's all very good. Um, Orla, excellent advice in building confidence can really identif identify with aligning your values and what's important to you with the right company that shares the same values. And I think that's becoming more and more important. And um, Margaret as well. Thanks, Anna and Helen. I've learned loads today. Um, Anna, listen, thanks again for your time. And um, well done. Because <laughs> even though you're, you're talking of confidence, I know we all, our inner critics sometimes take over. Um, oh, absolutely. Listen, we'll keep, yeah, we don't have our anything um, confirmed for next week yet. So there's a lot of people taking some staycations. So we, we might uh, take a week off ourselves and um, be back again at some stage. So, yeah, as I mentioned earlier, um, as I mentioned earlier, please share, like, um, do some form of engagement across both Anna's, Anna's pages and Employ Flex's and Employ Mum's pages. Uh, thank you again for the great attendance and all the questions. And Anna Healy, our fantastic speaker, thank you so much. There's loads of great takeaways there. Um, and thanks again for just your refreshingly honest uh, talk to us. Um, so yeah, thanks everybody and we'll see you again very soon. Okay. Thank you.